So part two for Isla, this is the Tuning Fork Flower Essence Hologram for Lung Energy and Heart Energy. Right. So that combination of energy can be that you're feeling troubled or that something in your world that's a really big belief, you're feeling um, uncomfortable or like you're being almost going behind something's back, <laughs> that it's it's a weird energy. So troubled and unfaithful. So, oh, awesome. Silver Princess, that is, I love Silver Princess because it's for when people who are, are feeling flat or drained or emotional flatness, lack of direction, despondency, that sort of thing. So Silver Princess is one of my favorites. So let's go have a squares. Right, we need to do two layers, transcend and dissolve. Okay, it's all of them, so I'll, I'll run them. Okay, so I'll, I'll just run the whole thing. What do we need to do? So we need to do it on the point. Do we need to run the lung meridian, the heart meridian? Nope, nope. Do we need to do a layer of the chakra? Do we need to do chakras? We do heart chakra, right? Do we need to do a layer of the aura? So heart chakra and the chiron point. Okay. Okay. I take responsibility for my attitudes and now choose to kindly, gently, lovingly and supportively transcend my aimlessness, my emotional flatness, my lack of direction and despondency into all-encompassing love. I make the commitment to kindly, gently, lovingly and supportively attune to my life's purpose, act with motivation and direction and express my love fully and freely. I take responsibility for my attitudes and now choose to kindly, gently, lovingly and supportively dissolve my despondency, my lack of direction, my emotional flatness and aimlessness into all-encompassing love. I make the commitment to kindly, gently, lovingly and supportively attune to my life's purpose, act with motivation and direction, and express my love fully and freely. Okay, so again, going back to the little Chiron point, so hand on your hip again. Don't know if you can feel that sealing over as we're going, so let's have a squiz again. So asking the body what percentage sealed the Chiron point is, okay. So to 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 to 70 to 80 to 90, okay, so we're 80 to 80, 80 to 85, 85 to 90, 85 to 90 percent. Is that enough? No. Okay, so we've still got to do one more layer. So what do we need to do here? ESR or Celestial Chakra, Chakra, Essence, Cranial, Chickies, Tuning Fork, Celestial. Okay, so now it's linked in with a layer of the Celestial Circuit. So let's have a squeeze. So I need uh, beginning and end points of the Central Meridian, beginning and end points of the Governing Meridian, uh, and tongue behind your teeth, tongue on the roof of the mouth, tongue as far back on the roof as you can go. Okay, so give me a yes, give me a no. Is it uh, working? No. Okay. So, is it the left side exhausted, the right side exhausted? It's the doing side, it's the masculine side that's exhausted. Is it halted? Is it flowing backwards? Or is it flowing forward? Is it halted? Is it flowing backwards? Okay, so that celestial circuit is actually running backwards at the moment. So that's a lot of fun. So let's go uh, see what we need to do. But it's on the right side, so we need the best technique. Okay, so we'll start there, which is just some pulse points to keep this energy into action.
we've got some weird weather coming over this afternoon, so I hope it doesn't kick in and make it hard to hear. So let's go have a squeeze. Where do we need to go next? So is it, do we need to do another layer of the celestial circuit? We do. Was it in first or second or third stage stress? So the right side of your celestial circuit was in third stage stress, which is that chronic fatigue exhaustion of your celestial circuit. So has it gone from third to second to first? So it's gone down to first stage stress. So what do we need to do to clear that? Uh, is the Chiron point sealed yet? No, not quite, okay. So it's still linked in with the celestial circuit. Is the celestial circuit still running backwards? Is it halted? Is it starting to move forward? It's starting to shift, but we still need to give, give it a nice little kick. So what do we need? ESR, oscillation, sharp. Okay, so we need to do a chakra to sort of move things along. Right, crown chakra. Oh, with the sacral chakra, which is interesting. So sacral chakra and crown chakra simultaneously. So hand on just above the pubic bone and over your head to help to get that energy moving. So crown chakra can be a little bit underactive when we're not feeling our intuition, we're not feeling our connection to source, we're not feeling our connection. And sacral chakra, thinking about the silver princess, it's the same thing because it's to do with reproductive organs. It's about that lack of ability to conceive what your life is going to be like. <laughs> so it's still about conception, but it's about conception of your life moving forward. Where do you want to be going? Okay, the body wants a little bit of reticular activating system stuff with this, so let's go have a play with that. Okay, so low serotonin. Um, yeah, okay, so low serotonin, increasing noradrenaline, so that assumption that life is just going to not get any easier, that the stress is going to continue. Okay, so where do we need to go next? Uh, so, the Chiron point, is it sealed? Okay, so to 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 to 70 to 80 to 90 to 100, then 90 to 95, 96, 97, 98, 9900. Okay, beautiful. Is there more we need to do on the celestial circuit? Is there more we need to do on the crown chakra? Is there more we need to do on the sacral chakra? Okay, so moving forward. So yay, Chiron point is sealed, nicely done. Okay. Okay, so we need to, so I need you to access, so that we can have a bit of a play with the lymphatic system. I just want you to um, think for a moment about those times when your body just feels tight and like it just doesn't feel like it's got the energy moving it feels heavy so i want you to feel that heaviness in your body and then just start wiggling your fingers wiggling your toes you know tightening some of your muscles and relaxing them 
you know, just sort of try to access as much of that musculature and those little micro vessels as you can so we can get into the endothelial tissue and the epithelial tissue and even tuck in your little tummy muscles, tight, 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 tight and relax. Your legs, tight, 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 tight and relax. Your buttocks, tight, 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 tight and relax. Okay, so give me a yes. Do we have enough information to kick into some lymphatic stuff? We do. Okay. So face down, face up, face down, face down. Okay. So do we need to look at something with NOT? Okay. So do we need to look at issue of tuberosities and the uh, labyrinthine reflex point? Okay. So the little points at the base of the buttocks, you know, so the issue of tuberosities, these little guys are screaming out for some work. So sort of like you could even um sit on like a tennis ball or something you know one cheek at a time and just sort of get into that spot it's basically where the buttocks like that's where we're talking about <laughs> that little spot there so they're called the issue of tuberosities and they are about the centering of everything in your lower back your gut your reproductive organs so when they don't work, that area, you know, basically from here to here, all gets congested. It just doesn't center easily, so then your muscles have to overwork to hold everything in place. Love the issue of tuberosities. Okay, so now we need to do the labyrinthine reflex points. So these little guys are on the base of the skull. So here, so it, and that, that's called the labyrinthine reflex point. So what it does is balances the head on the neck on your shoulders. So when it's not working, your neck gets heavy, your head gets heavy. By the end of the day, all you want to do is lean on the, lean on the table for dinner because by that stage your head's going, I don't think so, I'm not holding myself up any longer. So we lie down on the lounge, we lie down and just sort of don't, you know, make ourselves sit upright any longer. But actually that sort of gives me an idea as well because these two are to do with posture. Don't forget when you're standing to have all the balance on both of your feet and then sort of soften your knees, allow the knees to be slightly soft twist the pelvis forward a fraction and and pull back your shoulders so that you start to you know your body starts to get into that habit of being more upright so two flat feet soften the knees twist the pelvis forward pull your shoulders back and just allow yourself to feel more upright so that we don't do this as we get older you know that we keep going upright but anyway, so with the labyrinthine points and the issue of tuberosities, that's what sort of just a little bit of homework. The other thing you can do is roll up a towel. So have a towel really tightly rolled up because you must have some congestion through here is what I'm thinking, but I'll check that in a moment. So you have a rolled up towel and you lie down on the floor with it basically from, you know, so here, put a pillow behind your head and then when you, so that your head doesn't fall backwards, you still want your head to be, but then because you've got that um, behind you, you allow your whole body to open up. And even doing that for two, three, four, five minutes a day, will start to open up this whole area and start to retrain your body to once again, be more upright and not be like this. We're like this with fight and flight all the time. So we need to start to get into that habit of opening up. Okay, so anything else face down? No. Okay, so face up. Yep, okay. So turning over. Ha ha. Right. Okay, so either side of the pubic bone is showing up with kidney 27s. So the little spot underneath the collarbone, sort of giving that a rub at the same time as rubbing either side of the pubic bone. So that helps to center 
the upper body to the lower body. Ooh, ouch, it's a bit tender. Ah. So just sort of do that for a moment. And then swap hands and do it again. So I'm imagining that poor little pelvis must be a bit, you know, scrunched in as well. So once again, uh, sort of lying on the back, sort of putting the feet together and then allowing the legs to sort of fall out. Once again, putting cushions underneath them if you're not used to them, but just allow that pelvis to open uh, and just relax into a comfortable position. Okay, do we need to check the body for a gait? Yeah, it's showing up something, but uh, can I surrogate for a sec? Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna surrogate for you for a sec. Okay, so is it uh, left forward, right forward? Is it left, this, this combo? No, is it this combo? This combo. Okay, so the right side is exhausted, so the, the right shoulder, the right hip, which means that your body is in long-term fight because it's same side. It's funny, I went through a lot of this with my groups of Kinesi Foundations this year. It was so much fun. Okay, so, uh, so right side, right side. Oh, it's right side, right side, so back to Isla. Okay, so is that a uh, fight into first, second or third stage? Yeah, so that fight mechanisms in third stage stress, once again, that sort of goes hand in hand with silver princess energy, feeling aimless and, you know, just not able to get up there and, you know, do everything you want to do. And this is all in the lymphatics as well. So don't forget the lymphatic system. It takes a lot of neurotransmitter around the body, a lot of nutrition around the body. We've got more lymph in our body than we've got blood. So when we are really working hard to move our lymph, there's a few things you have to be doing or you could be doing, you know, to stimulate your lymph. And I'm sure you know most of these, Isla, but sort of like the skin brushing. So getting a good solid bristle skin brush and going towards your heart from all over the body. So skin brushing. So what that does is wakes up the lymph in underneath so that you can... Um, and then if you do it before a shower or before a swim or something, then you, it helps you to detox faster. You know, you can get one of those little trampolines so that you can sort of bounce on them. You know, those little rebounders, really cool. You can also uh, do the Wim Hof breathing. So if you haven't done Wim Hof before, the beginner's Wim Hof breathing is something that also helps to kick that lymphatic system into action. Yeah, so, you know, so there's a few things, and, and of course exercise, but I know when we're in pain, exercise, oh, the massages, so things like these, you know, so things like those that actually work to, uh, you know, so vibrate the tissue all over your body, so there's singles and there's quads, but basically you can use that everywhere, and by doing that 10 minutes three times a day, you know, it just helps to stimulate all that micro circulation in the body. So, and it feels good. Ha uh ha. -huh. Because I have a bad posture when I'm doing my paperwork, like I know I'm on this angle and my chiro is always on, on me. But, uh, you know, so when I'm doing that at work, I, I have it like a twist and I get this major burning. It takes like 30 seconds to two minutes of using that, it just calms down that burn, which is really amazing. And I know that in the past, I would have had to have taken a handful of, you know, fish oils or inflavonoid intensive care or something to get the body kicking into action. Anyway, so that I could sleep. But yeah, so those are really good ideas as well. But once again, just chatting about the lymph. And what else is overloading the lymph? So let's just have a is do we need to look at um, sort of toxins? Yeah, we do need to look at toxins. Do we need to stimulate the immune system to recognize some toxins? Yes, we do. Okay, so environmental toxins. Okay, so we'll just do any and all environmental toxins. 
getting your immune system to recognise them, any and all environmental toxins. So as we know, there's so many microtoxins in the atmosphere that we're just breathing in. They even um, say we're breathing in pesticides and microplastics and all sorts of things. So there's not just heavy metals, there's so many things that we're breathing in all the time. So if our detox mechanisms just aren't working, we are going to keep those inflammatory markers high all the time. We're not going to be able to reduce that inflammation. Okay, so environmental toxins. Okay, so it doesn't get rid of them, it's getting your body recognising them so that the immune system can start dealing with them. Do we need to go more specifically into environmental to toxins? What about toxins inside the body? Do we need to look at parasites or viruses or bacteria or fungus? Fungus? Okay. So any and all funguses. Any and all funguses. So fungus can be stuff like your candidas, your aspergillus, all sorts of things. And that can be activated just, you know, the, the sort of things like sugars and uh, lots of grains, uh, lots of antibiotics, things like the pill, HRT, that sort of thing. So it's basically changing our microbiome so that we get a fungal overload. But also if we have any and all, uh, you know, if we've got any toxins, quite often the body will deliberately wrap those toxins in a little package and then build like fungus around it. So then if we have, say, a lump somewhere and the doctor goes and does a biopsy, we can release, you know, the toxins out into the bloodstream. So anyway, so fungus and fungal toxins. Okay, is there anything else? There's something else. Okay, so environmental, oh, what about, okay, so food, food. So, uh, so food, what are we looking at? Are we looking at um, wheat and gluten? Are we looking at dairy and dairy products? Are we looking at lectins? Lectins, okay. So the lectins in foods are those pesticides that are natural in a lot of plants like nuts, seeds, pulses, that sort of thing. But about 40 years ago, we started genetically modifying them to have a lot more lectins so that the lectins stopped bugs from eating them. The problem was that the bugs were cleverer and they started getting through the high lectin foods and now we use three to six times the amount of pesticides that we used to use. So lectins, but what lectins do is, um, like I'm sure you guys get good quality meat and that sort of thing, but just say you've got cows that have been eating grains that have been genetically modified then the cow dairy, the cow cheese, the cow butter, the cow milk, uh, the cow meat can have high levels of lectins in. Lectins come in and they can destroy our villi in the intestines. And that can mess with our microbiome, it can mess with our gut brain, it can mess with our immune system, our inflammatory pathways, all sorts of things like that. So lectins, okay. Okay, what else do we need? Once again, gluten, dairy, lectins. Um, what about pesticides, herbicides? What about any plant? To I guess there's something in the plant toxin varieties. Do we need to look at salicylates? Do we need to look at hist histamines? Histamines. So high histamine foods or histamines in general? High histamine foods. Okay. So any and all high histamine foods. Any and all high histamine foods. So the high histamine foods can be things like uh, bone broth. The longer it's in the fridge, the more histamines. Any preserved meats, you know, sort of like salamis and things like that. Anything in pickles and stuff like that. A lot of wines. So high histamine foods seem to be messing with something in your system. And then histamine builds up in the gut, the brain, the uterus and the spine. So from there, we can end up with just about anything going on in our, in our head, anything going on in our spine that can mess with so many little areas of our body. So any and all high histamine foods. Okay. Uh, what about uh, oxalates? Okay, oxalates. Right. So, so again, the body recognising them. Yeah. So a lot of these can be quite nano-sized, you know, they can be such itsy-bitsy, teeny-weeny things. 
but oxalates are in a lot of our health foods. So things like spinach and almonds and almond milk and soy and soy milk and the darker the chocolate, the more oxalates, the darker the tea, the, actually all tea, except for herbal teas, herbal teas don't. But, and green tea actually supports the excretion of oxalates. But a lot of drugs like aspirin and beta blockers and things can actually block the release of oxalates. So in relation, so firstly, just getting the body recognizing oxalates. But they can be one of those things that builds up in our body over our lifetime. So the more and more pain we get into, those oxalates can build up in our joints and in our bones and in our nerves and just build up and basically jam up that lymphatic system so that it's just not working as easily. Okay, any other plant toxins? Uh, what about EMFs? Wi-Fi? No, so that seems to be good. You're probably doing some protection there. Do you need to look at water supply? Okay. Is there anything else we need to look at toxin-wise with the lymphatics? Okay, cool, cool, cool. interesting so something that you could try uh, well besides the skin brushing and those things I mentioned before the other thing we've got to do is work upstream with the digestive tract yeah okay yeah so if we're not getting enough hydrochloric acid in the in the stomach once again downstream effects can be lots of pain and inflammation so doing as much as you can and once again everyone's taste buds are different so some people can't do this but you know, either the apple cider vinegar before meals or the lemon juice and water before meals or uh, digestive enzymes before meals or things like tension, you know, the, the uh, before meals. So something that you do that sort of is stimulating the release of hydrochloric acid. So when food hits your stomach, you're going to end up having uh, a lot more hydrochloric acid. Then you break down your food properly. There's less food toxins that are jamming up your lymphatic system. Okay, so something else, okay. So, okay, so there's a little emotional layer of the lymphatic stuff as well. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to stop and start again. We need to do a balance around um, health is good, wealth is good. So we'll just be back in a sec.